Good evening. Warm welcome to you tonight on this beautiful evening as we celebrate Lent. I want to bring just a few things to your attention uh, as we begin worship tonight. Please take just a moment. Uh, if you have a prayer concern that you'd like to share with us, uh, you may do so with the pew pad. If you want to update any contact information, that's an easy way to do so also. If you do have a prayer concern or if you'd like to drop us a note, you can leave this uh, at the back of the church on your way out in the offering plates. And we thank you very much. We also want to lift up for you that there are a number of activities coming up uh, with regard to Easter. There's going to be a prayer vigil beginning Friday. That is Good Friday evening and will continue through Easter morning. You can find information there in your bulletin. We also need help from ushers for our Easter service. Easter Sunday services, and ushers, if you can help out in that regard, please sign up at the sheet at the back of the sanctuary there. There's some kids' activities that are going to be happening soon. Ingamokaboji Bible Camp is going to be visiting us this Sunday, and then a week from this Sunday on Easter, there's going to be an Easter egg hunt that's put on by the ninth grade girls' catechism class. And so we thank the ninth graders for that. It's going to be a wonderful time. So lots of things to uh, just keep in mind. Of course, please also remember to keep in mind everyone in prayer who's listed in our bulletin. And to that end, please do take your announcements home with you tonight. That'll help you remember those people in prayer throughout the week. With that, please rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We gather now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us silently make confession of all of our sin. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for us and for Jesus' sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and join in our first song. Thanks. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, full of compassion, we commit and commend ourselves to you in whom we live and move and have our being. Be the goal of our earthly pilgrimage and our rest along the way. Beneath the shadow of your wings, give us refuge from the turmoil of worldly distractions and let our hearts, so often a restless sea of billowing waves, find peace in you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in a responsive prayer of Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror, while you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you, and she whole, who can give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with my tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sp of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror they shall turn back and in a moment be put to shame. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the one who is with us, mind, body, and soul. Amen. So this psalm that we just read was from David, and David was pouring out all his worries, all his fears, he was really praying to God for deliverance from his troubles. David was a man who experienced great success, but also much sorrow. He defeated Goliath. He became the king of Judah. He overtook the city of Jerusalem and eventually even brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city. He carried out great successful military missions. But even with all of his success, he was not without serious struggles. Unfortunately, many of David's problems are self-inflicted. He elicited an affair with Bathsheba, arranged to murder her husband, attempted to cover up his sins, which cost him great grief great dishonor, and even loss of, of life of his child. But even still, he writes many psalms, many prayers to his Father in heaven. The man who wrote the song that we just sang, Peace Like the River, was also no stranger to sorrow and pain. Horatio Spafford was the man who wrote this hymn we just sang. He was an American lawyer, and he was also a Presbyterian. And he had four daughters who were drowned at sea when their ship was accidentally rammed by a British ship. And it is said that he wrote this hymn while he was on his way to Paris to meet his wife, who was actually a survivor of the shipwreck. It's interesting to think he writes where the chorus is, it is well, it is well with my soul. He's sailing to meet his wife in Paris where he just lost his four daughters. 
The first verse goes, starts by saying what we, uh, what we just sang was, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Sea billows, I didn't really know what billows mean, meant, and so I had to look it up. And a billow is a great mass. So basically a big massive wave he's describing his sorrow. But he's saying that no matter whether life is peaceful or whether he is being plummeted in sorrow, he is taught to say it is well, it is well with my soul. I think this is interesting, what we have been taught. And I love to read these devotions that our confirmation kids have written because they have such wisdom in what they have been taught through their faith. Rebecca writes in this devotion, she says, forgiveness, God will give us forgiveness. Rebecca reads this first verse and thinks of God's forgiveness. Or in the second verse, where it talks about Christ had shed his own blood for my soul. Alonso writes, God is our light in the darkness. He has been taught as well what God does for us, what Christ has done for us. In verse 3, it talks about our sin being nailed to the cross and bearing it no more. And Addison writes, peace washes over you in life like a river and reassures you that you are safe in the middle of everything. And then the very last verse, the very last verse writes about the final day when Jesus comes on his white horse and sword on that very final day. And Cole writes in his devotion, there is salvation found in Christ Jesus. Rebecca says forgiveness. Alonso says light in the darkness. Addison writes peace. And Cole writes salvation is found from Jesus. Our final day, on that final hour, when the Lord hastens the day when our faith shall be sight, when the clouds are rolled back as a scroll, when the trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend, he says, even so, even then, on the final day, even so, it will be well with my soul. I think about what these kids have been taught and how they can write out a very simple devotion throughout this entire season, Lenten season, and be able to sum up, summarize in just a word of what Christ, what God is to them. Forgiveness, light in the darkness peace, salvation, and with knowing all those things as they have been taught, we can sing, it is well, it is well with my soul. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.
trusting that all is redeemed by Christ's cross, let us rise and confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer for God's people in our community and all in need the world over. O Lord, it is by the blood of your Son Jesus poured out on the cross that we are saved and given the promise of life everlasting. O Lord, fill us too with your Holy Spirit that we might share the news of your Son, this good news that his sacrifice is for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, amidst all the trials and tribulations of this present life, help us to know in our heart of hearts, in our soul of souls, that all is well because of what Christ has accomplished, and that nothing will ever separate us from your love, not even death itself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all those who need any encouragement or consolation, any strength, strengthening or peace, any comfort and assurance. Especially we give in to your loving care. Pat and Dieter, Todd, Don, Lee and Alvaro. By your gentle hand, O Lord, bless Ron, Naoma, Stu, Dave, Marilyn, and Leanne. Stay close to the side of Sharon, Ken, Diane, Fernando, Vic, and Shirley. And give the encouragement that you have remembered their names and written them on the palm of your hand so that Christy, Lily, Walker, Cade, Dylan, and Moni may be encouraged and blessed in every moment. O oh Lord, we give over to you those closest to us and dear to our hearts that we name now in silence. To all of these, your children, Lord, we ask that you remember every blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, strengthen us in our own sojourn that we may walk through this present life with hope and encouragement until that day when our faith, too, shall become sight and together with all the saints who have gone before us, we also may be seated at that great banquet table that has no end. Until then, O Lord, watch over us and lead us in the path. For we pray all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated as you are dismissed by your usher.